This is the Hater's Guide to Festool. Now I know a lot of you, every time you see a Festool tool on a video, you get green with anger like the Hulk having to walk down 100 flights of stairs. Uh, so many stairs! You don't like the Domino, you don't like the track saw, you don't like their sanders because typically of the price. But there's a lot more to this tool company that I think you should pay attention to. Let's discuss it. And by the end, you may change your mind. If you do, let me know. Before we get started, it's important to know this video is not sponsored by Festool. They've never given me a tool or any money at all. I just generally enjoy digging into the history and finding out what there is about these tool companies that make them special. Festool actually started in 1925, almost 100 years ago, 98 to be exact. It was started by two men, Albert Fezzel and Gottlieb Stoll. They actually started repairing old wood processing equipment, similar to what you see on the screen, but probably not these exact machines. Now this brand and logo did not look like this when they first started. It actually looked like this, Spetzer and Stoll. That's how they named it. And they started like that all the way through 1932. In 1927, Festo come out with the very first portable chainsaw. Did you know that? That's pretty interesting. And in 1930, they come up with this idea, the SB-126 portable circular saw. Really changed the game, I think. In 1933, they made this super cool logo. I actually like this logo better than the other one. It's really retro, the Festo. They combined their two names, F-E-S-T-O. You got Festo. You see where this is going, right? In the 1930s and 40s, they had some of the best sellers as far as disc sanders go. As a matter of fact, they were the first to patent an independent extraction on a sander. In 1946, they came out with the AD85 portable circular saw. It's one of the ones they started innovating on where they had exterior runback protection for greater safety, cut depth adjustment without changing the motor center of gravity and a number of other improvements. In 1951, Festo come out with the orbital sander, really changing the game for woodworkers and contractors everywhere. In 1962, the logo started changing to get to what we kind of have today, almost. They changed it to the more block style lettering that you see. In 1962, they brought their first guide rail to market. In 1980, it was replaced with an aluminum version. And then in 2003, we got the version that we have today, the FS2. In 1964, they changed the game for on-site accuracy by coming out with a plunge saw and guide rail. Circular saw, not plunge saw. That comes later. In 1966, this is where the game really changed in my opinion. RTTS Orbital Sander is the world's first orbital sander with dust extraction. In 1983, we changed the logo to a blue color, which is kind of weird. In 1992, the Festool expanded their company logo to include the Tool Technic brand, which actually owns them today, which we'll get into in a minute. 1993 brought the sustainer not this one but one kind of similar to it and in 2000 we got the signature green logo that is loved and hated around the world today in 2005 youtube was born and one year later came the most divisive tool on youtube the domino 2007 brought their Capex, which is an absolute fine miter saw. We started getting our mobile dust extractors in 2009. The sustainer, as you know it today, came in 2012 with that locking mechanism. In 2020, what possibly could be the greatest Festool invention ever made, the Top Rock Radio. My favorite joint. This thing sounds so good. And in case you didn't know, Festool is owned by TTS Group, which also owns Sawstop, Shaper, the handheld CNC, even Nerex, a cool company called XOIQ that has an exoskeleton in case you have to work overhead, give you that extra support so your arms don't fatigue. Super cool technology. Tanos, who makes the sustainers. TTS Clean Tech, which is in their dust extractor. So a lot of that innovation going into the Festool product all under one company, super cool. If you like this video and you like Festool or you don't, click that subscribe button. Clicking the subscribe button will earn you a big old virtual fist bump, especially if you hit the bell icon and all so you get notified of all the new content I've got coming. So now that you got your history lesson, let's talk about why people hate Festool before we get into the why you should love them. I've been called a festering stool or a fool more times than I can count on this channel. Here are just a few examples of folks calling me names because I chose to buy a tool. It doesn't make sense to me. I've never been that way. I've never looked at a channel and thought, oh, they've got a Powermatic or they've got a Milwaukee or whatever brand tool they've got. I can't, I can't identify with them anymore. It is a tool. All of these tools you can replace with some other tool or a different brand tool and do the exact same job. But I think Matt Robbins sums it up pretty much the way I see it. He says, I only have a few Festool made tools, but would have more if I was a professional woodworker. If you're a professional woodworker, in other words, you're in the business of making products and making money, or you're a contractor and you're making money, that's where these tools will pay for themselves a million times over, or 10 times over, a thousand times over, especially because uh, they make things much faster, like the domino, the track saw, 
sanders and because there's superior dust extraction good warranty and just all around good tools most contractors or woodworkers aren't going to blink an eye at the price because they'll pay for themselves on the first job whereas a diyer who just does this on a weekend or once a month they can't justify the price and i've been there i know because i used to look at festo and be like wow that costs a lot of money why would i spend 225 or 250 dollars on a sander when i can buy the dewalt version for 89 dollars well you know what i didn't need to buy this because i wasn't in the business of making money with it at scale i was making money on a side with my side business but this wasn't a priority to me the first one i ever got was a gift this sander was a gift that's when it opened my eyes because I was like, wow, these are really nice. And with that dust collection paired to it, next level. I noticed there was very little bit of dust in here when I started sanding and I thought, let me look at some more tools. And that's when I started purchasing more and more Festool. So do I think the hate is justified? No, I think most people who hate on the Festool brand have literally never touched one or have never used them long enough to form an opinion. I think most people who hate on the Festool brand is just jumping on the bandwagon. It's like Ford versus Chevy. You're driving a Ford, you just automatically have to hate on the Chevy. It's just kind of the way it works. So what sets Festool apart from the competitors out there and what causes them to be a little higher priced than others? First and foremost, I think most people, especially beginners or those who aren't familiar with the company or the tools, uh, underestimate the power of the system of Festool. In other words, everything pretty much works together. Like this guide rail here can be used with the track saw as well as a jigsaw, a router, and some other tools that just make things much, much easier. You can also use the domino with this track. Also, all their dust extractors, the hose on the dust extractor will connect to the domino, the track saw, the orbital sander, the Rotex sander. They all interwork together so that you don't have to worry about what's gonna fit and what don't. When you take the MFT table, combine it with a track saw, as well as routers and other things, you have a system that you pretty much don't even need a, a miter saw at that point. You can pretty much make any cut that you want on that system. And because of the way they cut, everything's super clean. You don't get any tear out, anything like that. Take the Festo Capex, for example, it connects to their dust hose and it has one of the best stock dust collection systems on the market, bar none. And is it perfect? No but it's better than the ones I've tried previously, no matter if you're sliding or just cutting it at a stationary position. It's also extremely accurate. I don't ever have to worry about it deflecting much or having any trouble there. It's just one of the better top end saws I've ever purchased. And speaking of dust collection, this is where I think Festool outshines every other tool company on the market is their dust collection. You can connect this domino and have zero dust when you're drilling mortises. This sander collects 99, 98% of the dust. When you're sanding, I don't have fine dust laying all over the shop. And when you combine it with a track saw, especially if it's supported correctly, your material supported correctly, you're getting very, very little dust from the track saw. I did add the dust cover port, it does help. One thing that gets lost in a lot of people that look at Festool is they don't understand how much thought goes into these tools and i didn't understand until i got them they're the little bitty things that add up to a lot the way the depth adjustments work the way the tilt adjustment work on the track saw the domino it's one of the best engineered tools i've ever got there's so many adjustments here to to fine tune everything you need to do plus the different widths that you can quickly change on there to get your different size holes that you're trying to drill how easy it is to move the fence up and down, the storage system that goes with these in the sustainers. I always thought the sustainers was a goofy upsell or a reason people were buying these things, but having a place to properly store your tools is huge and it has really helped my organization in the shop. And the simple fact that all of their electrical cords disconnect, you would think that's silly, but when you're transporting these or storing these around the shop, it is awesome just to be able to take the cord off and not have it all jumbled up in the way. Silly but it's awesome. And the fact that they offer a bunch of attachments to their tools. There's a right angle sanding attachment. There's attachments for the domino, attachments for this. Like everything has extra stuff that you can add to it to make your job much easier and more efficient and time is money. And it helps you pay for the tools if you can work faster. And offering things like this. This is a sustainer full of dominoes. Keeps everything nice and organized. Is it a little pricey? Yeah, but I can take that anywhere I want to go and take the domino with me in a case if especially if you're working job site to job site this makes everything so much easier and i think a lot of people don't know about the company themselves how they treat their employees 
I learned about this a few months ago on a channel called Whitworks. I'll drop a link to that. But I want to bring on somebody that actually works there, but used their tools a few years before he actually went to work for them so he can give you a better inside scoop on what goes on at Festool. Jason, thank you for joining us. Hey everybody, my name is Jason Bent. I operate Bent's Woodworking. I like Festool for all the obvious reasons. They make great tools, they have an amazing warranty, and everything just works so perfectly together. I didn't start with Festool, I worked my way into it. It's unfortunate because it seems like Festool is this really polarizing brand, and the biggest reason for that, in my opinion, is the cost. And the sad thing is, is that majority of the people that tend to have a negative attitude towards the brand have more than likely never used the tools. Now that's their opinion and that's what everybody's entitled to, but here's what I'm gonna tell you. In November and December, I had the opportunity to do an internship with Festival North America here in Indiana as part of my retirement from the Army. The biggest thing I walked away from was how everybody in that building is treated and how everybody is important. What a lot of people don't know is that Festool is actually still a family owned business in Germany. And me as the outsider looking in, got to see that family feel within the organization here in the United States. From the CEO sitting in his office down to the person packing the box that gets shipped out to you, I feel like everybody was equally important. Cleanliness and comfort and taking care of the employees is one of the highest priorities that I saw during my time there. They have an unbelievable facility. It is always clean. As a matter of fact, their facility is very different from a lot of the other warehouses within that industrial complex that they operate out of. And why is that? It's because they care about the people that are doing the work to make sure the company still continues to run. People can say what they want about Festool and the brand. I'm not here to force anybody to purchase Festool products, to use Festool products. My experience has been nothing but positive and my closest friends are employees of Festool. And because of that, it makes me feel like I am part of that family. So for me and my business moving forward, Festool is the only option that I even consider. It's just, I have so much confidence in knowing that I am gonna get exactly what I want. And to me, that speaks volumes about a brand. Thank you, Jason. I greatly appreciate your insights on Festool. Another thing that sets Festool apart is their innovation. As you can see from their track record, all the way back to 1925, they were always continually innovating on the tools at their disposal and tools that didn't even exist yet. That's one thing that I like to see from the company. They come out with new tools pretty regularly. Even this last year, they're innovating on their track saw and some other cool tools, cool tools that are coming out this year. You like to see that in a company that you're investing in, that they're continually trying to improve and they're actually making new tools. Another thing that sets Festool apart they have one of the best warranties in the business. Now, Rigid has a lifetime service agreement. In other words, they're gonna service your tool. I have a video on that, my experience with that. But Festool has a three-year all-inclusive warranty, which means if I wear this thing out, if I use it every day for six, eight hours a day, and it just tears up from wear and tear within the first three years, they'll replace it, no questions asked, or they'll fix it. However, if it goes outside that three years, you got a 10-year guarantee on parts, so in six years, if this tears up and they don't make this model anymore, I've got a 10 year guarantee that they're gonna keep making parts for it. And if they don't, guess what? I get a brand new saw. A lot of places, especially rural places like where I live, it's availability. It's hard to actually put your hands on a Festool tool in a store, brick and mortar store. But if you live near a Woodcraft or a Rockler and some other brick and mortar locations, you can actually go in and mess with these tools and see what they're like before you buy them. I visited my favorite Woodcraft store down in Dallas and was able to check out their Festool display. Just, it's awesome to be able to walk into the store and pick those up. Unlike some of the more popular brands where you can go into Home Depot, or Lowe's and more common places and touch them. That's where Festool kind of drags behind a little bit in my opinion, but at the same time, uh, they're more geared toward woodworkers and professionals, so they're sticking to those less DIY type stores is what I think anyway. But you can always find them online. I'll link to some of my favorite places in the description. If you've never had a Festool tool and you want to start dipping your toes into the water, what do I recommend you buy first? I highly recommend the ETS-125 and a dust extractor, probably the CT-36. It's a mid-sized dust extractor. It has a huge capacity, 36 liters or something like it. It'll hold a lot. Those two combined will get you started and you will see a major difference in your sanding as far as your hand fatigue and especially the dust in your shop and in your lungs. These two are superior in my opinion to anything else I've used. I'll put a link to the description below to the set that I have. Love them. 
And then if you want to dip in a little further, I highly recommend the cordless track saw with two 55 inch tracks so you can cut a full eight foot sheet. After that, you're on your own. Start picking what you want and what will actually help you in your shop. So what are the downsides to owning Festool? Price. Everybody complains about the price of their equipment because it is expensive. This is like a $1,500 purchase for me. Is it worth it? It just depends on what you're doing. If, if you're making money with your business and your business can pay for this, then if you want it, go for it. If not, get something else. I mean, it's just a personal preference. Do I like it? I do like it a lot. Is it what I thought it would be? No, it's not. I thought the dust collection would be perfect because everybody talked about their dust collection on the saw. It's not perfect. It's pretty good, but it's not perfect. That's the only thing that I was let down by. But as far as accuracy, everything else about the saw, I love. The dust collection could be improved. But everything else, other than their miter saw, in my opinion, is priced fairly. I know I may get some hate for that, but the Domino, it's the only thing like it on the market. There's constantly Domino killers trying to come out, but none of them will do everything that this will do, especially when you put it in the Festool system with the track, the dust collection, all that. Nobody else can compare. So in my, if I had a product like that, it would be at a premium as well. Supply and demand. And the track saw is in line with a lot of the competitors like Milwaukee and some others. It's an awesome saw. I have zero regrets. And it's the only one with anti-kickback that I know of anyway. This sander, yeah, it's $225, but, or $250 or whatever it is now. It's a matter of value. What is it bringing you value whether you're making money or not? If you're a hobbyist and these are valuable to you, then by all means, check them out. I think the attention to detail that Festool puts in every single one of their tools and even their sustainers, their guide rails, everything makes a huge difference, especially when you start buying into that system. And that's what people miss a lot when they just surface level look and see a price tag. I mean, even the speaker has a soft closed lid. Give you a big fat, for instance, this is the Festool Rotex R0150 on the inside of the lid of the container, sustainer that it comes in. It gives you all the accessories that you might want to use with this awesome beast of a sander. And the way everything properly stores in its place, it's just a well thought out system. The system? Again, Festool system. And the system. Once you understand Festool system, then you understand what you're buying into. And I think it's worth mentioning the build quality of their tools. They are really, really well-made tools. When you pick one up, you absolutely understand the quality of it, especially after you use it the first time or two. You know that you have a quality tool in your shop, without a doubt. And they're green. Who doesn't like green? So you think I'm a fanboy drinking the Kool-Aid? Well, you know what? I am. I got both hands on the jug and I'm okay with that. If you're not following Jason Bent from Bent's Woodworking, go check him out. I'll link to his channel in the description below. He has awesome videos on woodworking as well as tools. I'm an organic Festool fanboy. I've not been paid by them. I've never been paid by them. They've never given me a tool. I just really like their stuff and it's okay. It's okay if I like it. It's okay if you don't, but I hope this video gave you some insight into the company and what I found in my research. If you like this video, you'll love the Hater's Guide to Ryobi Tools or the Hater's Guide to Harbor Freight. Either one of those videos, if you click them, you get a big old virtual fist bump. Thank you for watching.